Well, the big news out of Canberra today, former minister in the Morrison government, Alan Tudge, has resigned. Now, there was early speculation that former treasurer Josh Frydenberg might use the vacancy to return to politics, but Sky's been reporting sources say that is unlikely to happen. Joining me now is the national editor at The Australian, Dennis Shanahan. Great to see you, Dennis. The margin in that seat's tight, but I guess Labor might be a chance to pick it up, do you reckon? Well, look, uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting by-election. Uh, the margin is only 2.8%, uh, and it, uh, it got smaller at the last election. Uh, that was part of the uh, pressure on, on Alan Tudge at the election. Uh, but what actually is going to happen here, it's a first test for Peter Dutton as leader of the Liberal Party. Uh, it's going to be a tough seat. In the state election, uh, the uh, state seats around there uh, were all in trouble. So it's not going to be an easy seat for the Liberals to retain. It's a must win for Peter Dutton, no doubt about that. He's got to throw in there and get the best candidate he can, which won't be Josh uh, Frydenberg uh, or some other people have been speculated on, but he has to get in the best candidate and win the election. Now, one thing here, though, you would expect that Labor, if they can hit Peter Dutton for six, they'll be cock a hoop. But it's not going to be easy for Labor either. Uh, they, at, the, uh, by, at the last election, the Liberal vote sprayed everywhere. It didn't just go to Labor. Uh, there's no automatic assumption that the decline in the vote for the Liberals will go to Labor. Secondly, this is in the mortgage belt. And, you know, it's going to yes. be very hard for the Labor Party to win a Liberal seat when mortgage stress is so high, inflation is so high, and we're likely to have another interest rate rise before the by-election. It's very interesting you say that, Dennis, because I looked through some of the suburbs, one turn in Knoxville, places like that. It's sort of outer eastern Melbourne and it's occupied by, you know, middle class families, a couple of kids at school, uh, both parents probably employed. And when you look at the issues that Labor's going to be up against when that by-election comes up, you're going to have potentially, depending on when it's called, a, a tenth uh, increase in, in mortgage rates from the Reserve Bank. You've got petrol prices again starting to go back up and inflation, as you know better than anyone, Dennis, is hitting things like supermarket prices. So it'll come down, won't it, Dennis, to who those people in Aston actually blame? Do they, do they blame international circumstances or do they blame the Albanese government? Well, I think there is a growing uh, a trend and clear evidence uh, that people are starting to blame the Albanese government. Now, uh, there's also an historical aspect to Aston. Uh, back in 2001, the Howard government was in big trouble. It lost a by-election in Ryan in Queensland. Uh, it was expected to lose the by-election in Aston. Uh, and Kim Beasley, riding high in the polls, was expected to win that seat from the Liberals. Now, there was the new GST just been introduced. John Howard won that by-election. And a lot of people at the time said that Kim Beasley was going to lose the federal election because he did not win that seat. Now, a federal election's a long way off, probably not till 2025, but this is an extremely important psychological, political moment for both leaders and Anthony Albanese will need to be careful not to build up expectations of a win here because he's running with a lot of interest rate and mortgage lead in his saddlebags. Very emotional departing speech to the House after question time today, Dennis. Uh, I'll ask you in a sec why you believe that that Alan Tudge felt the need to quit. But ha let's have a little look at some of the things that drove him out. I'd like to inform the House that I'll be resigning from Parliament effective from next week. Um, I informed the Prime Minister and the Speaker of my decision earlier today, and the Leader of the Opposition has known of my likely intent since early January when my decision was cemented following the passing of my father. It's not been an easy decision for me but it is necessary for my health and for my family, amongst other reasons. 
They've had to put up with things that no teenager should have to, including death threats, the most recent of which was last week. Health and death threats, Dennis. No one wants to hear that, do they? No, and look, it is, it's, it's always sad, or most of the time it's sad, to see a, uh, a, an MP resigning before their time is up for, uh, for reasons particularly connected uh, to their family. And it was clear, everyone, all MPs, uh, and despite, uh, you know, Anthony Albanese made a point that obviously there have been differences between Alan Tudge and the Labor side, uh, but everyone recognised, including the Prime Minister, as he spoke uh, grace, gracefully uh, on uh, Alan Tudge's uh, resignation, about the impact on families, teenage children. And, of course, Alan Tudge has gone through quite a bit, uh, he's gone through quite a bit in relation to his family, uh, his public life, and uh, I think that it was sad to see the, uh, the manner of his going... Uh, and it was also clear there was a palpable feeling in the House of Representatives of sadness and you could see MPs thinking, yes, my family. I could see Labor members, some thinking, yes, the cost that our families pay for their political careers. I think that's the general message here, apart from the individual message from Alan Tudge.